Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Peter Lutz about the Las Go classic Something. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Las Go's Something, my interview with Peter Lutz. Enjoy! Peter Lutz is a DJ and producer from Belgium who is responsible for a massive amount of releases. During the years he produced tracks under his own name Peter Lutz, but he was also involved with tracks under names such as Astroline, Groove Watchers, Anna Grace, Ian van Daal and of course Las Go. In the year 2001 Peter teamed up with producer David Vervoort aka Dave McCullen and singer A.V. Goffin for a new project which they called Las Go. The result of their first collaboration was the track Something, which became a massive hit. Because of the 20th anniversary of Something, I made a visit to Belgium to sit down with Peter Lutz in his brand new studio and ask him about the story behind Something. My first question to Peter was how old he was when he started to listen to music. It was around 12 years old and uh, my first cassette I had from my parents was Yazoo. Uh, with that time Don't Go, I'm still a huge fan of that track. Um, and also when I watched uh, Depeche Mode on Countdown, they, they, they came to perform there. I saw their synthesizers I said, wow, I want to do that. And that was a start. <laughs> so around what time did you start buying like your own equipment? Um, I got my first organ because I had to learn some some, some musical uh, theory and stuff mm -hmm. like that from my parents. And I got my first little organ around my 14th. And from then on, yeah, I was so uh, obsessed with synths. Yeah. And, and, and now you have a nice collection. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's starting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So do you still remember your very first ever release? Uh, my first ever release was in 95. It was together with a guy f f around here, uh, Gottfried Stockmans. It was uh, Plato. It was an ambient project. It was recorded in a studio from Serge Ramakers also. Uh, and it was released on CNR. Yeah. So that was an ambient album. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you still do some ambient music now or not? Uh, not really, um, maybe in the future. Um, yeah, I like to do it because mm -hmm. it's, it's nice, if it's nice, uh, nice atmospheric music, but uh, no, at this moment it's only house, dance and stuff like that. Okay, okay. So for this interview we're going to talk about something, a track that came out 20 years ago under a project named Los Go. Uh, for that one you did work together with David Vervoort and singer Evie Goffin. Uh, first things first, how did the three of you got to meet each other? Um, Evie was already at our record company, she was on the contract with, with the same management as I was. And uh, David um, came at the record company with some demos. And the, our, my manager at that time, Stefan, he asked that David, yeah, would it be nice maybe to put you with Peter in the studio? And so, so we connected like that. Uh, the first track we made was a track with uh, Astroline. And then an afternoon he said I have an idea with a vocal line um, and it was something so we started I started with the, with the music um, the instrumental was finished and we needed a singer and yeah I, I called Avi and she came over and the rest is history yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it true that you made it like in your bed in your bedroom? The, the, yeah, the that was true. Yeah, st uh, at that time, I still lived with my parents, uh, and my studio, home studio, mm -hmm. was in my in my room. It was a, a small room, and there we made the track. Okay, tell a bit more about the production process of something. Uh, at that time, everything was MIDI. There was no audio plugins. We had uh, in 2001. It was not like that. So only with synthesizers and samplers. Um, and there was on Atari ST, the computer, uh, the software. Uh, Cubase? No, that at that time was the first Logic already. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the lead sound came from Axis Virus at the time. Um, there was a lot of Juno 106 uh, uh, in, this, in the track, and the chords came from the decor in the in the in the break was ASR 10 sampler. Yeah. Yeah. So do you still have some of the old equipment? Uh, only the virus. Okay. It's still standing there. <laughs> so, what was the hardest part of the production? Um, there wasn't. There was no difficult part. I 
everything went so quick. Uh, we didn't thought about the track. It was it was just there. Yeah, go with the flow. Yeah, I, it was four hours and the track was finished. Four hours. Yeah, yeah. not bad. Not bad. It was really not bad. <laughs> so who, who wrote the lyrics of something? Uh, the lyrics were written by David. Yeah, David was always the, the lyrics guy. Uh, he. Uh, it's, it's also a nice one. Uh, he wrote the lyrics on the toilet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, most of the time when we worked together, I, we made some ideas for the music, and then he went uh, to the toilet, wrote the lyrics. Ten minutes after, he came back with the lyrics. And oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So when he was working on something, he was probably also working on something. <laughs> That's probably yeah. right. <laughs> so do you know if he he was inspired by by something when he worked uh, on the lyrics? I don't know. Yeah. We, we didn't think about that yeah. that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So was it difficult to find a label for the track? Um, I was already on ANS Productions. I was signed on ANS Productions that time, and. Uh, when we finished the track, we went to the to the record label, and at, fir at first sight, they said, "No, we wa we don't want to release it. Like the Belgium dance is a little bit over, and then we had something like, from, yeah, why don't we press 300 finals, and, and we send it to the DJs, and we will see." And so they did, and that's why on the vinyl it's only a question mark. And uh, okay, we sent it to the to the DJs, and there was a massive uh, support on that, and also a lot of requests. For which track is this? Which track is this? And yeah, and, and that summer I went on holiday in Spain, and the management called Peter. You're signed on Positiva Records. I said what? Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, that was really great. Yeah. And did, did you guys have an artist name already then? The artist name was there. That was Let's Go. Yeah, yeah. And and the, the name came from David was a real uh, Scotland fan. He has also family in Scotland, and uh, Let's Go is uh, the uh, Glasgow without a G and a yeah. W. Yeah, yeah, that's clever. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, something became a top tenet here in Belgium, but also in lots of other countries in Europe. Um, in the UK, something got released in 2002, and there it made it to the number one position of the UK dance charts. And in the main charts, it made it to the number four position. Did you expect the track to become so big? No, not at all. Yeah. I still can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So do, do you remember hearing the track on the radio or, or the TV for for the first time? Yeah, that was really crazy. Yeah, we heard it already here in Belgium a couple of times, but yeah, that's a little bit normal. Um, but then in the UK, I, we were asked also for Top of the Pops and all those kind of things. It was really, yeah, st still unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Can, can you tell a bit more about the Top of the Pops gig? Uh, we did it two or three times. Um, it was really nice. Yeah, we were there with, with huge artists. That was a b back in the days with Kylie Minogue and stuff like that. It was yeah, great times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and everything was live, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> the, the vocal was always live. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the, the music was at, at TV shows. It was never live. Yeah. No. So was this also your very first ever TV performance? Uh, no, we did. I did some performances here in Belgium on, on VTM and, and the VRT. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the UK, that was the first one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It must have been pretty exciting. Yeah, it was really nice. It was really nice. Yeah. So how old, how old were you back then? Uh, I was at that time 28. 28. Yeah. yeah. Ah, cool. So do you have any idea how many copies have been sold of something? Like uh, years? More, more than 5 million. 5 million? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, and it's still doing really well on, on Spotify? Yeah, since since last year it's it's climbing and climbing. We do now at, at this time around almost 2 million streams a, a month. Yeah. So it's really, really great. I still can't believe it. It's crazy, right? For a track yeah, that's yeah. like 20 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, during the years you, you guys did perform as Lasgo pretty often. Um, what is the craziest and weirdest thing that did ever happen during a show? During a show, um, or before a show, or after a show. Of after, after, I still remember in 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 the, in the U.S. Um, we had to perform in Long Island, and our hotel was in uh, in Manhattan. And it's all there was always with a limo in in the U.S. And uh, okay, we came back from our performance in Long Island, and David and I we were sleeping in, back in the limo, and. It, and then at one time I, I wake up and the limo was going from left to the right. So it was going on here. I looked outside. There were some gangsta guys uh, uh, pushing the car. And I said, what's going on? And yeah, the, the driver was outside. Eva, our singer, was also outside. She wanted to go to the toilet. And uh, at that time they were uh, throwing dollar bills to our driver. Oh. <laughs> 
So I said, what's going on here? And then the driver said, oh, everyone in the fucking car right now. So Avi back into the car. I said, well, what, what went, what, what was wrong? Yeah, she wanted to go to the toilet and we were in the fucking Bronx, man. <laughs> so that was, that was really scary. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you guys also were like pretty popular like in South America? Uh, South America, in, in Brazil, we were uh, uh, re really, really popular. That was, this is still, till now, our biggest fan base. Yeah. 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 Oh wow! It's really amazing the the Brazilian people. Um, yeah, still we have got so much love and and I get messages every day from them. Yeah. Still now, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Back in the days when we went uh, to perform in in Brazil, we had we needed security at, at, in a hotel at the at the elevator. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, really, yeah. really wow. crazy. So, what is your personal highlight when it comes to the release of something? Personal highlight uh, from something, yeah, for me, is, yeah, that the track did so well. We never expected it. It 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 changed my life. Yeah, it changed my life. I I still can can do music every day. Um, that's every every producer's dream. M making making yeah, I making your liver, living of your yeah. music and and till now I. I I can make music every day and that's also because of something. Yeah, so after something music became like your full-time job. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So wh what did you actually study? I'm a photographer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. nice, nice. I never did something about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, when I, I finished school, I uh, went to work as a hol holiday job for free record shop at that time, at a record store. Yeah. And uh, I worked there for three years and then my music started to become popular mm -hmm. and, and yeah. yeah. Since then, I do full-time music. Ah, cool, cool. So yeah, after the release of something, Lasgo released other hit singles as well, such as Alone, Pray and Surrender, for example. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite Lasgo track? Um, I Wonder. Uh, that's that's one of my favorites, yeah. I Wonder. This is from the first album. Um, and also, yeah, something. Yeah. Still something. <laughs> So yeah, there were a lot of famous acts from Belgium in the early zeros. Uh, besides Losco, there were acts such as Ian van Dahl, Milk Inc. and Silver, for example. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the Belgium acts did so well around that time? I don't know. Uh, we were all at the same record company, all the same uh, management, and and all all the like like Christoph, the producer of uh, Ian van Dahl, is also not far from here. Reggie lives here, one kilometer. I think it's the area. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Something in the water. Yeah, there was something in the water. I don't know what. Yeah. But uh, yeah, at that time, uh, yeah, this area was really popular uh, with producers. Yeah. So, so during the weekend, you were all in the same plane to gigs. All yeah, the yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the track is 20 years old now. Um, I've noticed on your socials that you've been working on a new version of something. Mm -hmm. uh, did you finish the new version already? Not yet. <laughs> I'm working on it, and I'm still doubting. Um, it's really difficult to make a new uh, to make a new version of that track. I don't want to mess it up, you know. And um, I f I threw threw away already. 20 versions mm -hmm. so if there comes a new version it has to be good yeah, so yeah. i take my time yeah, yeah of course yeah. Yeah. don't rush it <laughs> no. so um yeah what else can we expect from losgo in the near future um at the moment i don't know um maybe there are plans to do a reunion i don't know we talked about that but i understand av is uh, very busy now she has three kids um we will see yeah um maybe we do something in the future maybe we don't i don't know yeah, so Avi, does she still like work on music or? She uh, she she writes uh, music at, at, the, at this time. Uh, she still sings a lot, but um, yeah, let, let's hope we can do something in the future. Yeah. And David? David, he is uh, also very busy as a producer. He makes a lot of uh, Flemish songs. Um, yeah, uh, but he's not making dance anymore. It's more Flemish and he's a producer for all big Flemish artists yeah. at the moment. Okay, yeah. and they're all also from this area? Yeah, they're also from, uh, he lives three kilometers from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah not yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, we're recording this interview in your brand new studio, which looks absolutely amazing. Um, what are the biggest changes when you compare the new studio to the previous one? Uh, for me, the acoustics are really the most important thing now and, and, and like the previous one was really bad acoustics um, i always had problems with mixing it sounded well here and if, if i played it out for a crowd or some in, in a car it sounded always bad so that that was the problem of the room of the yeah. acoustics and now it's okay what you hear here it's like that yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, you made a decision to like rebuild the studio like in the beginning of the Corona period. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. yeah, I had no gigs anymore. I had a lot of time, so that's why we did it then. Yeah, yeah. good decision. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, you're very active as well with releasing uh, music under your own name, Peter Lutz. Um, what are you working on right now? Um, I'm working on, on, on some new club tracks, uh, also a new one with Hunter Falls. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, uh, during Corona, it was a little bit difficult for me t to produce new tracks because I had no feeling anymore. Because if you're always on the road in the weekends as DJ, you can you can test tracks out with the crowd, you see what lives with people and during Corona, yeah, you had nothing. You were always in your studio and, and yeah, the, I made tracks at that time, but yeah, now it's time for club tracks again. Yes, exactly. <laughs> finally, yeah. finally. So yeah, out of all your own productions, do you have a favorite, favorite one? Um, my favorite production, also Last Go Something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, that's my biggest track till now, so... Special track, of course. Yeah. So yeah, what else can we expect from you in the near future? Um, yeah, I hope a lot of new music. Um, maybe something again with uh, Let's Go. Um, and a lot of gigs. I'm, I'm, I'm DJing a lot now. Um, I'm resident in, in Belgium's biggest club, uh, Versus, where I play every weekend, so yeah. Lots of stuff coming Lots up. Lots of stuff coming up. Good, good. Is there still something on your bucket list music-wise? Um, yeah, I always dreamed of uh, starting a band in the, st in the style of Deepish Mode, something like that, an ele electronic band with a, with a, with a, with a singer. Um, maybe I do something in the future like that. Yeah. I'm also a big fan of Rufus du Sol, mm -hmm. that kind of music. I, maybe I start a band in the future like this. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what instruments do you play besides uh, like synthesizer? Uh, synthesizers and triangle, that's all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No. No? Okay, well thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Peter Lutz about the Las Go Classic Something. Peter, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Once again, Thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.